fast enough. <sighs> From Dad. Okay, so, a letter. Dear son, I have changed things. Don't worry, this is not an addition change. Well, that's comforting. Quiet, I'm talking. Okay, as for why it's changed, DM Fiat. DM Fiat! I said quiet, I'm talking. Oh, sorry. But what about Ted and Cloakie? Hmm. Cloakie's contract wasn't notarized, so he left, and Ted died. Cirrhosis. Well, I guess that's fair. Da -da 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 -da. And I want you to review The Hobbit. That one. Love, Dad. Oh, joy. Let's do this. Hello, my lovelies, and welcome to the NPC Reviews, where today we'll be taking a look at The Hobbit. No, not the Rankin Bass adaptation, though that does have its own issues, such as noses like gourds and uh, elves that resemble gremlins more than anything else. Though they always want to mind the California Raisin Men for some reason. Hmm. Anyway, today we'll be taking a look at the 1966 animated film of The Hobbit, done by Gene Deitch of Tom and Jerry fame. The movie starts off. This was Dale, the city of golden bells, in the time of Middle-earth, before men came to power and ruined magic forever. Suddenly, it was all destroyed by the monster lizard Slag the Terrible. Slag. The agent of evil on Earth. They changed Dale from a river merchant town into a golden kingdom, and smock to slag. Normally this would be the point where I put in a changes counter, but considering everything else in this story, an overload would be inevitable, so... I just don't have the insurance for it. Keep rolling. Only three survived the flames. A watchman who slept when the dragon came creeping. You survived because you're lazy? Torin Oakenshield, general of the now destroyed garrison of Dale, and Princess Mika Milovana, who sadly watched the crumbling ashes of the once golden realm. So it has come to pass, said the great wizard, that Dale has been destroyed by slag, and that he nests on the treasure in the carved halls on the lonely mountain, just as it is written in the great book. Then it is clear that the time has come. The time of the Hobbit. And they're bringing in a Force Prophecy to get the story rolling. My thoughts on that later. At least the Hobbit hole is fairly accurate. So they barge in, start eating Bilbo's food, and start talking about dragons and prophecies. Naturally, Bilbo says no, but... The princess was furious and impatient with all this talk. Mr. Baggins, she shouted. That dragon has killed my father and all of my people. He has burned to ashes my golden land of Dale. Ah, oh, boo! If you are all afraid, then I shall go alone. Bilbo was shocked. He shouted at Gandalf, But this is crazy! She's only a child! You can't let her face this journey, that dragon, alone! Correct. The great wizard agreed. I'm glad you see it at last, dear Bilbo. This is the evil smile that says, You just got played. So they leave, Gandalf wishing them a fond farewell. Bye, suckers. This part I do take on Richard. They've taken Gandalf the Grey, and relegated him to minor character and quest giver status. One of the five wizards. I am a servant of the secret fire, wielder of the flame of Arnor. The guy that says he's a burglar because I say he's a burglar has been written out of the story. I might have known. So next they come across some. Groans. <sighs> Hungry brutes with skin as thick as bark. As if trolls weren't common folklore elements and easily understandable or something. Anyway, so the groans are tricked, fight, and get caught in the sunlight. Then, just after that, Bilbo randomly falls into the earth, finds Gloom and the One Ring, of which apparently he is the true bearer. After seeing this, they probably would have turned the One Ring into the gatherer of fluffy bunnies. <laughs> and no, not the awesome kind either. So Bill gets out, and they pretty much skip over Mirkwood entirely, much to the spider's relief, I'm sure. 
So they make their way to the Lonely Mountain, where they spy Slag, and from there, with a cop out the size of the Tarrasque, they... Perhaps it was only the power of the ring he wore. Perhaps it was his growing love for the Princess Mika. Or maybe it was only that he knew that someone had to do it. Together with the others, he fashioned a powerful crossbow from old mining tools. And the Arkenstone, the White Heart of Dale, was the arrowhead destined for the Black Heart of Slag. So they slay Slag and... And the city of Golden Bells was built again. And Bilbo and Mika reigned there together. Live happily ever after. Although all the princess's people were killed and Dale reduced to ash, so... Who did the princess and Bilbo have to return and rule over? Consistency in a 12-minute animated slideshow? Thy name is not... I have three points to make for this. Two gripes and a final thought. My first gripe is the prophecy that says Bilbo is the Dragon Slayer. It was completely unnecessary. Matters of divine providence were always taken care of, but neither the Hobbit nor the Lord of the Rings needed a prophecy to get them going. The maker of this film could have easily used fate, providence, or just because Gandalf said so, it would not have increased the running time or deviated much from the source material. Second was turning Bilbo into the prince-to-be, and essentially turning him into an action hero. One of the big things from Tolkien's work was how even the littlest of people, the littlest of characters, could have an enormous role to play and impact. Small characters make big differences, and by basically making Bilbo a big character, you gutted one of Tolkien's key themes. Now, in Deitch's defense, he has gone on to say that if he had the chance to do it again, he would be more respectful of the source material, so kudos there. and final thought is that despite everything this version cut out, changed, and ignored, I cannot be angry at this piece. Largely, it was a product of its time, and primarily this short was not meant for public viewing. It was a rights grab, kind of like Fox making an X-Men movie every couple of years. This was made so the rights owner could keep them long enough to sell and make a tidy profit. It wasn't made for viewing, it wasn't intended for distribution, so I can't dislike or like it with that perspective in mind. So it is sad, but not worth the energy to actually dislike. Well, glad that's over with. Guess I gotta go get used to Hamlet all over again. Anyway, farewell, my lovelies, and join me in the exploring. Hello, master! Oh, sod.